morning all and today I'm looking at this it's a switch and uh, it is just a switch it's a rotary switch it has 20 positions uh, around a full cycle and it also has a rather nice click action when you press it down so you might for example use it to dial in a parameter and then enter or perhaps change a setting and reset. I mean, you could use it for whatever you want. But despite the fact that this is a relatively simple mechanical switch, this thing's got me baffled. I mean, it's taken me down so many different avenues to try and understand it, or certainly to try and work out how I'm going to use it. I've had to look at gray code. I've had to look at switch bounce and actually worse than switch bounce, continuous switching noise. I've had to look at resistor capacitor filters and even Arduino interrupts. So this switch has been kicking around in my project box for quite a while. I've probably had it for a year and uh, just got hadn't, hadn't got around to using it. So now I've come up with an idea to make a remote controlled variable brightness high power LED. I want to start using this and so I was just having a think about how I'd write Arduino code to read this switch as an input sensor and that's when things got ever so complicated. So how does this thing work? Well it's got a ground, a VCC, a switch output, a data and a clock output. Now that at first glance looks quite complicated but in fact it's relatively simple. The SW, the center pin, is just the output from the click switch and that is relative to ground. Now clock and data are two outputs from the rotational switch. Here are the three pins for the rotational switch. The center pin is common and then the outer two pins are the two outputs. So let's start with a really nice simple uh, wiring setup. All I'm doing is testing the click switch. So I've got wires to SW and ground going to an LED from a battery pack. And when I press the switch, the LED comes on. But you can immediately see that this thing's going to give problems because if I click the switch and then just sort of release the pressure a bit, I can get the LED to come on and off without actually unclicking it. So there's going to be some problems with switch bounce, I guess, on the clicky switch. Now let's have a look at the clock and data outputs relative to ground. And I've got two LEDs here, a green and a blue one. And I've had to dim the lights a bit so that uh, you can see them clearly. Now every time I turn the switch between two of these 20 positions, the lights briefly flash on. So I'm just turning it one click at a time. But if I slow down my turning of the switch, you can see what's actually happening. So let's move off the zero point. So the green light comes on, then the green and the blue come on, then the green goes off and the blue stays on, and then they both go off. And that all occurs between two of these little individual 20 stops. Now you may have noticed that uh, when one of the lights was meant to be off, it was actually on dim. And that's because there are pull-up resistors on the back of this circuit board and uh, current was flowing through the pull-up resistor and into the other LED, but the switches themselves make and break in that sequence. So here's a table of the output codes of clock and data. Now I haven't called them clock and data, I've called them G and B just for green and blue because the names are quite arbitrary and I think it's slightly misleading that one is labeled clock and one is data because they could in fact work the other way around. But here are the four output codes that occur between each of the 20 detents of the switch. Now a detent is where it sort of drops into position because there's a little sprung element in there which makes it settle at these 20 positions. Between each two of those 20 positions, you get this sequence, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Now it looks a little bit like binary, but it isn't because binary doesn't go 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. What this is, is gray code. So here's the Wikipedia article on gray code, and it says the reflected binary code, also known as gray code, after Frank Gray, 
is a binary numeral system where two successive values differ in only one bit. Uh, the reflected binary code was originally designed to prevent spurious output from electromechanical switches. Well, that's exactly what this is. Now, if I redraw this table of codes as waveforms, you can start to see uh, what's happening here. So again, G and B, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Now I'm just going to extend these on so that it's obvious what's going on. So you can see that the two waveform outputs are actually the same. They're just 50% mark space waveforms. But they differ in the fact that one is slightly phase shifted from the other. Now if you look at a full cycle from the falling edge to the falling edge, this falling edge is shifted by a quarter of a cycle. Now you could say that um, the phase shift is a 90 degree phase shift because if you take a cycle as 360 degrees then the phase shift amount is 90 degrees but I'll probably avoid that terminology because it gets very confusing since 360 degrees occurs within one step of this switch it would be very confusing with the 360 degrees of a full rotation. So I think I'll just call it a quarter of a cycle phase shift. Now I've also slightly repositioned my detent lines because the detent, the individual uh, stopping positions of the switch, would actually be in the midpoint of the zero zero uh, code. And uh, you also have to bear in mind that if you use these pull-up resistors on the back as pull-up resistors, then this whole thing could end up being completely upside down and the detent position uh, would actually give you a code of 1, 1. Now let's just uh, briefly compare the grey code that comes out of this switch with classic binary code and it's not really until you see it drawn as waveforms that you see the difference. Grey code has two waveforms which are identical but slightly phase shifted. Binary code gives you this classic halving and doubling of the frequency. Uh, this is half the frequency of this. So forget binary code, we're dealing with grey code. So here's a prototype uh, circuit board from something I was designing back in 1992. So what's that? 22 years ago and uh, it was the lighting controller input device and the idea was that you could hold down uh, combinations of lights and then turn this knob to increase and decrease the brightness. Now the way this works is that it has two optocouplers so each of these black boxes, uh, sorry about the dust it is quite old, has an emitter on one side, an LED and a phototransistor probably on the other side, so the sensor. And there are two of them. Um, so when you turn the wheel, this disc, which has alternate black and transparent sections, rotates between these two sensors. Now, actually, interestingly, I've just noticed that um, there are one, two, three, four five uh, sections per quarter of a disc. So this has exactly the same 20 uh, steps per complete revolution that the um, mechanical switch does. How interesting. So I've just uh, bodge connected my battery pack there onto this circuit and powered it up. And I've put the two scope probes onto two outputs from that um, LS14, which is a hex Schmidt inverter, uh, although I think I inverted and then inverted again to keep the uh, output constant. And now I can rotate the knob, let's just reset the scope, and capture this quadrature phase shift waveform. See if I can get a better view of the scope. Okay, that's slightly better. So now if I rotate the wheel, I can get, if I rotate it slowly, I can get that, but it shows that quarter of a cycle phase shift. If I rotate, rotate it quickly, same thing, it's just that the frequency is increased. 
but you can see immediately how one of the waveforms is quarter of a cycle shifted from the other one. So I've just managed to freeze the scope and you can see here that uh, on the yellow for example there's the falling edge and then the next falling edge is there so that's a full cycle and the red is quarter of a cycle shifted away from it. Now this quarter of a cycle offset re relies on some fairly precise positioning of these opto sensors. So if I bend them, if I bend that one for example, I can probably upset that quarter of a cycle thing. So I'm just going to try that and capture it on the scope. So by messing around with the position of uh, one or probably both of the sensors, I've now got it so it's almost 180 degrees out of phase, so I'll just bend that back. Now, here we get to probably the most important bit, understanding the direction that the dial is changing in. Because if you want to use this to say, increase the brightness of a lamp or an LED, or decrease it by going the other way, you need to be able to see which direction you're traveling. So let's look at the scope. If I turn this thing clockwise, you can see that the high parts of the yellow trace come before the high parts of the red trace. Yellow is first, red follows behind. Now I'm going to turn it the other way. And now you can see that the high parts of the red trace come before the high parts of the yellow trace. Red is first, yellow follows behind. Back to clockwise, yellow is first, red lags yellow. Now I've just frozen the clockwise trace. So let's, for example, assume that yellow is clock and we go on the falling edge. If we measure the red trace when yellow drops from high to low, red is high. Now here's a trace I captured when I was turning the knob anti-clockwise. Same thing when yellow, which we can use as clock, goes from high to low, we now find that red is low. So if we always use the falling edge of yellow as clock, then if I rotate clockwise, on the falling edge of yellow, red is high. If I rotate anti-clockwise, on the falling edge of yellow, the falling edge, red is low. And that's what tells you which direction the knob is turning in. So the inside of the 20 position mechanical switch is going to be something like this with 20 steps on a disc and two reading devices. Now in my naivety I thought wow they've managed to uh, get the opto couplers very very tiny and uh, fit them inside that switch. Well of course there aren't any opto couplers inside this switch. This switch is mechanical and that is the source of a major, major problem. And that problem is noise. Look at it. Lovely, lovely noise. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to connect this rotary switch to an Arduino and attempt to increment and decrement an integer when I turn the knob clockwise and anti-clockwise. Let's see how we get on.